It is time for member statements. So I will now turn to the member from Niagara West. On this side, would you like to go on this side first? Well, I'm sure that the member from. Uh, well, well, yes. Okay. So I now I recognize a member from University Rosedale for your member statement. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. My writing is home to a huge creative sector of artists, musicians, filmmakers, as well as music venues, theatre and performance venues. And this sector, these people, they are going bankrupt, they are moving out, and they are giving up. The beloved Free Times Cafe is unable to make $10,000 a month in rent amid public health restrictions. Sneaky D's, the iconic music venue, is fighting for its life amidst development pressure to build unaffordable condos. The Commons Theatre and Studio was forced to close, unable to cope with the economic impact of COVID-19. Ashley, the owner of The Round in Kensington Market, a queer art and music space, was just evicted. The locks on their door are chained and the equipment has been seized. And just last week, Bruno, the owner of the Mod Club, a music venue, was evicted after 18 years because he was unable to pay. There are so many reasons why development pressure, exorbitant rent, evictions, shrieking revenue, and now the pandemic. Our creative sector, known for its resilience, is being torn apart. And this government has abandoned this community in its time of need. We risk losing what makes our riding and our city so unique. And it is why I am fighting for this province to extend the eviction ban, to include more businesses, to provide real rent relief, because I stand with the community, the creative community, in my riding of University Rosedale, and they need your help. Thank you very much. Next, we have the member for Niagara West. Thank you, Speaker. Every year, people gather from across Niagara to watch the beautiful displays and artistic talent displayed at Santa Claus parades in Niagara West. Whether it's the big city parade in a small town in Grimsby, where tens of thousands of pounds of food for local food banks is collected by the Grimsby Fire Department, or the Smithville Christmas in the Village Parade with the biggest little town parade around, or Fenwick's unique parade with local Shriners and others, these events are celebrated and beloved by all in the community, who gather for family-friendly fest festivities celebrating Christmas and to give a non-perishable food item to help those less fortunate in our communities. I also always enjoy going to these events, handing out candy canes, uh, and bringing good wishes to my constituents at these family-friendly events. However, this year, due to COVID-19, the parades won't be moving forward as usual. But whether it is encouraging people to decorate their homes with holiday cheer in Smithville and drop by the local food bank, organizing a drive-through holiday display and party in Fenwick, and a multi-location food drive and festive display called the Holiday of Hope in Grimsby, the people of Niagara West are resilient and creative. My thanks to all the organizers of these new innovative ways to celebrate Christmas and support our local food banks in a family-friendly and safe environment. I hope many families get the chance to attend these festive and safe events this holiday season. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member for Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. While countries across the globe continue to grapple with COVID-19 pandemic, Azerbaijan, along with other groups in the region, launched a full-scale war against the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh on September 27th. While some blame pipelines as a reason, the Armenian people of my community believe that the purpose of the war was to forcibly remove the Armenian population from the region. Humanitarian ceasefires were constantly violated as Azerbaijan employed banned weaponry, such as cluster bombs, on civilian and military targets. On November 9th, Russia broke, broke, brokered a ceasefire agreement between Armenia and Azerbaijan, ceding large territories to Azerbaijan and triggering the exodus of tens of thousands of Armenians from their historical homeland. This is a humanitarian crisis. How can the ethnic Armenian population stay alive under the discriminatory and oppressive Azerbaijan regime that has no regard for their human rights, history, or dignity? My Armenian constituents are concerned we are tumbling towards another Armenian genocide. The pieces are set. The board is in play. We feel the only way to ensure the survival and the rights of our fellow Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh is, one, for this House to recognize the right to self-determination of the Armenians of Karabakh and recognize their independence. Two, for Canada to extend much-needed humanitarian aid to the displaced Armenians. And three, 
for Canada to watch and react to further human rights abuses by Azerbaijan. This is a terrible situation, Speaker, and we have to react. Thank you very much. Member Statements. Member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to acknowledge the efforts and commitments of thousands of frontline workers and volunteers across my riding in Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry, and indeed throughout the province of Ontario. While the pandemic has reached new heights, these dedicated individuals have been instrumental in the province's ability to maintain services we depend on so greatly. Let us also not forget the incredible support they have received from employers, organizations, and volunteers. This potent partnership is on display in many places, including the Winchester and District Memorial Hospital. And I'm happy to share this leg legislature the recipients of the hospital's annual commitment awards. Dr. Marin Hamilton, RN Frida Fleurd, and pharmacist Ali, uh, Ahmed Ali, and the volunteers who staff the hospital's information desk. Their collective devotion to the hospital and the community requires to ensure, to ensure their friends, families, and neighbors receive quality health care. I congratulate this year's recipients and thank them for their tireless support and work that demonstrates the Ontario spirit that makes this country the best place to live, work, and raise a family. The difference they make continues to shine and deserves to be celebrated. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Next week is Victims and Survivors of Crime Week, a time to raise awareness about the issues facing those who are victims and survivors of crime and their families. Those issues are numerous and life-changing, and it is a time to acknowledge the work of community leaders and service providers who help them, like Reverend Sky Star in Out of Bounds Grief Support, too often with little or no support. But for some neighbourhoods, these issues never seem to end. Neighbourhoods where many families fear the simple act of having their children play out of doors. Just over a week ago, in my community, a 12-year-old boy's life was taken while walking down the street with his mother in the middle of the afternoon. May God embrace his soul. I cannot even grasp the grief his family must be feeling. All of us must do everything we can to help them. We must do everything we can to stop the cycle of violence that is targeting our communities and loved ones. Chronic poverty, lack of opportunities, systemic racism. These are just some of the issues that rob our young people of hope and make it so hard to see a better way forward. They must be addressed so youth can actually envision a future for themselves where their efforts are recognized, where they have a good job and financial security and the barriers they face are broken. We must invest in our communities and must invest in our youth and the programs that are helping them. Together, we can build a future where every child knows and feels that they belong, have value and are safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Cambridge. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, this past weekend, my son Victor and I had the great honour and privilege of participating in a Christmas parade featuring 180 decorated cars driving past the home of the great resident of the city of Cambridge, five-year-old Dominic da Costa. Dominic is a warrior. He lives, with his, he lives with his family, his dad Rob, his mom Denise, his brother Mason, and his sister Mia in Hespler. Since the age of two, Dominic has been bravely battling neuroblastoma that is in stage four. But Dominic continues to live every day with courage and a beautiful smile that he showed the cars decorated in Christmas style for the impromptu parade that started at the Hespler Memorial Arena. The parade was the idea of Dominic's cousin, Christina da Costa Alessandrini, and her friend, Janet Geibel Pereira. And with the support of the Go Gold Cambridge community, they got the word out in a social media campaign that attracted thousands. The parade participants met in the Ellis Road area of Cambridge and overflowed the parking lots of St. James Anglican Church and Woodland Park Public School into the arena. When Dominic isn't busy commanding vehicles on a parade route, he loves basketball, Lego Minecraft, Fortnite, Spider-Man, Pokemon, Transformers, and anything to do with puppies. So Mr. Speaker, today, I salute a warrior named Dominic da Costa, and we say from Queen's Park, we love you. Thank you very much, member statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, although Remembrance Day was, was last week, I believe it's never too late to pay tribute to those who've served. It's a day we remember the brave men and women who have, who have and continue to serve our country during times of conflict and peace. Over the years, we've seen the servicemen and women play a different yet essential role on the world stage. And I'm sure Canadians of all ages were grateful to see the military service personnel spring into action this spring when their help was needed to help battle COVID-19. Last week, I had the honour to attend Remembrance Day ser services in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore, and I'd like to thank Jeff Ankeman, President of Branch 101, and Donna Sampson, President of Branch 643, for inviting me to participate in a small yet important ceremony. Branch 643 was formed in 2017 when Branch 3 merged with Branch 210 and now find their home on Jutland Street. Last week, I also had the opportunity to join members of the Royal Canadian Legion as we commemorated a new home for the Legion's Cenotaph in New Toronto. The Cenotaph, donated by the community, has stood on 8th Street since 1983, but given its size, it became apparent the Cenotaph needed a new home. The new location at Colonel Samuel Smith Park is an ideal place for the iconic Cenotaph, which has been a place of gathering for those looking to remember the brave men and women who gave their ultimate sacrifice in World, I, World War I, World War II, and the Korean War. I want to thank our councillor, Mark Grimes, and his team and the, and the dedicated city staff for their work to make this happen in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Temiskaming, Pachrin. Thank you, Speaker. A few days ago, I got a call from Tom Graham. Tom runs Duncan Lake Hunting and Fishing Camp. And just for a brief description, Duncan Lake is in the Gauganda region. To get to his hunting and fishing camp, you have to go 10 miles up the lake. It is the unique Ontario Canadian experience that people dream of all over the world. And there are many of them across Northeastern Ontario. Tom is just one. His world came crashing down when the border closed, because typically it's American tourists who want those experiences. And after this budget, his world continues to crash because a tax credit doesn't help Tom Graham and all those mom and pop tourist outfitters out there. Even the Heritage Fund, the Northern Heritage Fund grant for PPE, it's welcomed, but it doesn't help Tom, a bigger doc for social distancing doesn't help you when you've got no income. This is a unique part of our culture, of our heritage, and actually of Ontario's economy. And it's being totally ignored. These people have fallen through the cracks, federal programs, and quite frankly, the provincial government knew that and has failed to act. And we are going to lose the Tom Grahams, the Duncan Lake camps, camps across Galganda. The whole of Galganda is basically for sale. We need to act, and this government failed to. Thank you. The member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this week, members of the Scleroderma Society of Ontario will be meeting with MPPs to discuss uh, this autoimmune disease. Many of these advocates are patients, and I applaud them for sharing their stories of living with this disease and fighting for a cure. Speaker, 2020 has been a tough year for many Ontarians, but those living with this diseases and other illnesses have struggled even more. Because scleroderma is a rare disease, it comes with loneliness and isolation. People feel overwhelmed and distressed in the absence of information, support, and an understanding peer group. Speaker, the cause of this rare disease is unknown, and currently there is no cure. As a member of this legislature, we should all take the opportunity to learn more about this disease and what support, supports are available to our constituents living with this condition. Scleroderma, hard word, but harder disease. Let's do our part to raise awareness, take action, and find a cure. Thank you to the entire team at the Scleroderma Society of Ontario for your work, advocacy, and dedication to this cause. You have our support. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, member statements. That
concludes our member statements for this morning. The member for Timmins has a point of order. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I'd request that we stand out our leads until the Premier arrives. Once again, I will remind all members not to make reference to the absence of any member in the House. And there are good reasons why we uh, observe that rule normally. I did hear the member for Timmins seeking unanimous consent of the House to stand down the lead questions for the official opposition. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. No.